Hey everybody, what's up and welcome back. You're here with me, Shapeless, aka The Game Tamer. And today for our in-depth tutorial, we're going to go ahead and talk about Ramsey. Or Ramsey. Ramsey. The fighter. He is a fairly balanced guy, uh, from what I know of him. Uh, he does some pretty good damage. He has a decent dot, from what I know of. But let's get into these skills. Cut. Left mouse click. Strong, deliberate cuts with a blade. I would hope they're deliberate. Uh, and your dodge, left mouse click, has a long reach. Okay. Now we have rush, right mouse click, dash attack in the direction you're moving, damages enemies around you, and counts as a dodge. Hmm. So could you, like, rush cut? That sounds interesting, ladies and gentlemen. Flurry, a series of quick attacks that damage enemies in front of you. Okay. Juju fruit. Coats your blade with poison. Next attack applies poison. 50 damage a second for 3 seconds. And negative 50% healing. That is not... That is not a bad dot. Then we got Fruit Punch. Shower the nearby area with poison fruit. Inflicts poison and obscures enemy vision. Uh, 500, set 5 and 100 damage per second. Respectively. Well, let's get in there. The show my done. Man. This dude's got some interesting uh, movement. Yeah, he's, he's got a lot of weird proportions. Alright, here's our right click. Oh, okay, so he's got a... Oh, shit. He's got a fucking knife on that shit. Here's our right click. Cute. Okay, you can move it. And then Juju Fruit. I wonder, so that's your dodge attack. So can you Oh you can I'm pretty sure that's probably implied. But anyway, let's get into the deeper parts of this. Hamstring. Dodge left mouse click inflicts a slow, which can be used from your right click as well, which is really good. On hit reduces Juju Fruit's cooldown once per swing, not per enemy hit. Okay. Juju Magumbo. Damn, that's quite the quite the phrase. From there we got critical condition, which hitting a poison target doubles your crit chance. That's pretty good. Got open wounds, hits inflict bleed for three seconds. Bleed stack up to five times, five to twenty-five damage a second. That's probably not bad either. Um, hmm. Especially because of his range. All right, so we got hamstring, then we have lash out, which is dodge left mouse click hits reduce rush cooldown by one second. Okay. Or dodge doubles the slow effectiveness. Okay. So I would definitely say that this is better for the for going against like mobile champs, like Wu, like like even Margrave for instance, cuz Margrave is actually a pretty mobile tank. He uh he jumps a lot and his jumps are his, his dashes can get away from you really quickly. But, like, trip, for instance, like, fighting a trip would be probably pretty well if you took a hamstring. But, uh, this is definitely better for the... Because he's a fighter, he's not, like, an assassin. He's better for kind of, like, sticking in it. So, if you, if you have a lot of, like, melee champs that are getting to your back line, then I would go hamstring. But if you have the ability to kind of, like, take the chance to do the damage if you need to, then I would definitely probably, honestly go open wounds just because it increases your dps which is the damage that you can do over the course of the fight if you're because you're only doing it on hitting a poison target and i get that reducing the cooldown of juju fruit's good the cooldown on it's already 15 seconds so like yeah that's pretty decent but it's not amazing so then we can go open wounds where we have the dot on top of the bleed and the bleed stacks regardless. So I would definitely say that damage meta wise it would be Juju Magumbo into open wounds. And then if you need to be that sort of CC ish help for your back line, then I would go hamstring probably into dead weight. Now we have Rush. When you leave Caltraps behind that inflict a slow. That's always nice. We can increase the duration of the caltrops, or we can make them cripple, which reduces the jump height. 
as well. Which is actually really good. And once again, it's another one of those things where it's... He becomes a fighter that can kind of zone control. Where he can drop Caltrops for two seconds and just... You know... Have this ability to just kind of drop off a little bit of an area. And then we have Bouncing Around, which on hit reduces Rush cooldown by two seconds. So, hitting with Rush. Uh, increases more. Hitting in the side of the back cracks armor. And hitting an, en an attacking enemy interrupts them. Hmm. For higher level play, I would definitely say counter play is probably the best option. Just because of interruptions. Like, interrupting people is fantastic in this game. Like, if you can get really well-timed interruptions, it will suck. Especially if you're, like, a channeling caster or any kind of, like, squishy. It sucks. Uh, but if they have decent tanks that you can get around mo pretty mobile, uh, pretty mobily, then I would definitely go low blow in this. But uh, Watch Your Step is one of those like niche moments where, once again, if the backline's really getting in and they're causing your backline a hard time and it's starting to lose you the game, then that would probably be when you go Watch Your Step. Onward to Flurry. Whip around. Deflect projectiles and hits enemies around you, but deals reduced damage. <laughs> Hmm. That's not too bad. Or we have Whipper Snapper. Young Whipper Snapper. Performs a powerful final strike. Hmm. From there we can go final strike inflicts broken armor. So once again we have this option where we can go against tanks. And we have final strike briefly dazes enemies. Which prevents people from using abilities. Which is also really good for the backline defense and stuff like that. Uh, then we have this whip around where we can go apply weakness to all enemies hit or immune to hit reactions while performing flurry. Hmm. Hmm. I would say impress is probably the better way to go because it gives you the deflect so that you can kind of body block for your teammates if you have to like be a, a semi frontliner. And Impress inc allows you to weaken enemies that are getting to your backline, or weaken enemies that are going to approach your backline. So, if you're standing frontline-y, then I would go Whip Around into Impress. If you're doing damage, then I would go Whipper Snapper into Whiplash, baseline. But if they have, like, two tanks and they're really getting hard to kill, then I would just go with Broken Armor and Breaking Point for that one. Now on to Juju Fruit. We can, on use, gain 15 stamina. Not bad, especially since he works really well with dashing. Or poison duration increased by 3 seconds. This is a better... The, here you have your utility and your damage here. So we have our damage options, which inflicts heavy poison, which you still get the damage, but you get negative 75% healing. Or you have smear, which with poison coating, your next hit will inflict curse, which denies buffs. So, like, if you're going against, for instance, a Lord Gnosis, and he goes to use his movement speed buff after, you know, taking a lot of damage and trying to, like, dip out, he wouldn't get it. Uh, but it does increase the cooldown of Juju Fruit by 3 seconds, which is a very large negative. Um, however, it, it's dependent. If, if they have a lot of, like, buffs, then Smear is the way to go. If they don't have buffs but still have the healing, then Out of Juice is definitely the way to go for your damage options. Now we have Fruit Sugar. We have Blood Sugar, which on use you gain 30 stamina, which is just, you know, another uh, way of continuing your assault. Or we have a Juju Fruit a day, which cleanses debuffs. So if they have a high CC team, you, regardless of even whether or not you do damage, I think that if you have a high CC team, you still want to go Fruit Sugar into a Juju Fruit a day, only because he's a mobile fighter. Uh, his health pool is probably not immense. It's 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 large-ish, like larger than a regular assassin, but not large enough to just dignify jumping in and not caring. So if they have high CC, then I would definitely go with the cleanse debuffs. If they don't, then you can go blood sugar if you're kind of like more enjoying the mobility aspect of it, and just trying to you know get in get out. Now we have our regular passives, which is Adrenaline. Rush gives you 10 stamina. 
another one of those good ones for mobility and just going in and out. We have the flurry duration is doubled, which adds two seconds to it, which would be pretty, pretty brutal, honestly. Or we have inflicting poison no longer removes juju fruit. Hmm. Hmm. Inflicting poison no longer removes juju fruit. Oh, so it's saying activating juju fruit, you can just keep. Oh shit, that's actually really good. You can make it so that just a after you activate the poison, you can continuously hit people and continue to gain poison on other people. That's actually really good. Uh, I would say that honestly, probably one of your most meta options is definitely poison coat. Uh, I would definitely go it personally, and it further reduces the cooldown of juju fruit during clashes, which is really good. So if they have a uh, like a high healing team, I would definitely go poison coat. Uh, if you just want to get your damage in and you want to say during clash gives you a hundred percent crit chance after using rush. By all means, do it. I'd probably do it myself if I was just going for damage. Uh, can't touch this isn't bad, but it's it's definitely a good one. Uh, so I would say your meta options are Poison Coat if you're trying to deal with healers, and Adrenaline if you just want to be the solo carry. Now for our alt stuff, we have Tactical Awareness, which gives back damage reduction and plus damage from, the ba from behind. As you guys know, I don't really care too much for this option, but it's not going to bias me in certain situations or we can have plus 25 percent max stamina which for a fighter where you're trying to go in and out this is definitely your meta option and then we have acrobatics which dodging costs 20 percent less his kit works well with dodging so i would definitely say that acrobatics is your most often way to go baseline uh, but from here we have skirmishing as well which is faster stamina regen while in combat and out of combat health regen starts two seconds sooner. These are also very good things, especially for the in-out playstyle. Um, but if you're in and you don't have to get out very often, or you're good at dodging, definitely go acrobatics. Now from tactical awareness we have uh, alt into left mouse click is plus 10% damage, damage and plus 10% front damage reduction after using it. So this is also a very good option if you have to be that frontliner for your team. Uh, you get overall damage reduction from the back. After using your alt, you get damage reduction from the front. Or you can have on guard, which is plus 20% front damage reduction while attacking. Uh, also, another really good option. Uh, these are definitely much more of your tankier options, the ones that are like, I need to frontline for my team. I need to be here for them. This is what I got to do. Uh, that is all we've got for Ramsey this time, guys. Hopefully you all enjoyed this I will go ahead and mess around with him a little bit maybe maybe do a couple of things we'll do this we'll do a little bit of bit of this we'll do a little bit of a little bit of this we'll go with a rush into low blow and we will go with uh, Juju Gumbo into open wounds let's see what kind of damage we got here Ooh. Woo. Let's see how far you can actually hit from. Huh. Whoa. Huh. The bleed. But yeah, he's actually, uh, he's, he's really mobile, honestly. Oh yeah, I like this a lot. He's a lot of fun. Get that crap out of here. But anyways, guys, that's it. That's all the time I got for this one. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to whip that like and a little the like and sub buttons into shape for me. But once again, and as always, guys, you stay tame. I'm gonna try to do the same, and I will see you all in the next one.